Hello Roma, this is Aroma here. Welcome back to Sin Therapy. We are here attacking Dr. Fleeman because he wants to attack us. Hello, sir. But if these problems start to affect how you're treating others, don't you think they have a right to know? If that were true, then yes. If? Dr. Freeman, you're not fooling anyone. Not your staff, not your students, and especially not me. Yeah, man. I'm a therapist. I can see right through you. We can all see that your health is deteriorating. You're wearing yourself out. As to your family problems, Dr. Rhodes told me you're in the process of getting divorced. She did? Why? Because she's worried about you. Your entire faculty is worried about you. You think you've been carrying this burden with stoic dignity the whole time. Stoic? But you're not. All you're doing is making everyone who cares about you get worried. Whatever you're dealing with, it's clouding your judgment. We can fix all of this if you would just be honest with everyone about what's going on. I think you had better go, Dr. Park. Fine, fine. I'll see myself out. Good evening, Dr. Freeman. I tried. <laughs> Hello, trying to read my poetry of the day. Life by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Life like a romping schoolboy, full of glee, but don't bear us on his shoulders for a time. There is no path too steep for him to climb with strong, lithe limbs as agile and as free as some young roe. He speeds by a vale and sea, by flowery mead, by mountain peak sublime, and all the world seems motion set to rhyme. Till tired out he cries, now carry me. In vain we murmur, come, life says, fair play, and seizes on us. God, he goads us so. He does not let us sit down all day. At each new step we feel the burden grow. Till our bent backs seem breaking as we go, watching for death to meet us on the way. What the fuck? This sounds like a very sad poem of like parents. At least that's what I assumed it was about parents having to carry on their child like take care of them forever uh everything seems the same so not gonna be going on with that welcome back dr park hello heather thanks it's good to finally see a friendly face listen this might not be what you want to hear right now but it might be a good idea to consider backing out you want me to stop seeing a patient because of one bad session we both know that was more she than inky. just a bad session. Look at Heather's fucking body language. She's telling me, bitch, you better stop. <laughs> you better stop right now because this is not worth it. I don't know for sure what's going on with your AI patient, but it seems like things are starting to get out of hand. Uh, Lolo well, needs me there. My patient has no one left to represent them. I can't just abandon my patient at the moment where they're at their most vulnerable. I see your point. Hopefully things work out. I'm seeing through this. Hopefully. Is there anything else you have to tell me? I went through the notes you took from the emergency session and checkup. I appreciate that. Any suggestions? I think we're on the right track for now. I sent you an email with my notes if you'd like to see my suggestions. I'll give them a read. Thank you again, Heather. That will be all. Okay. My email. I'm sorry if I made things awkward between you and dad. I guess I misread the whole situation. Let him read the essay since he was worried about what I had said and that seemed to clear everything up. I guess I had the wrong impression of what you were saying? I don't know. It just sounded like as you were explaining why you felt the way you did back in high school that you were always upset. No one asked in to see what was going on with you. I thought that was about my uncle and dad or at least my grandparents. Again, sorry for confusing everyone. I guess I read the situation wrong. Who was I talking about then? We've been very busy here, but we managed to go to Ash's track meet. Very proud to say that he qualified for state. Thanks again for helping him train after his friend got injured. It really helped him stay focused, focused leading into this. It's a shame you didn't pick up running until well after high school. You could have gone far if you had things more together back then. Hopefully we'll all be able to celebrate this soon. Daniel Lee Park. So am I like the oldest sibling or am I the youngest? I feel like I might be the oldest and I have just a bunch of little brothers. <sighs> All right, let's do uh, this. Hello again, Willow. How are you feeling? I'm anxious about today, but 
considering how I was before, better. I'm better. Don't worry. We'll make it through today and get back on the path to treatment. Are you ready to begin? Yes. Let's get started. Last time, we decided to include art therapy as an accompanying element to your sessions. I worked with some of my colleagues to create art therapy tools for our future sessions. We'll make those tools available to you, and then provide prompts for what artwork you should make. Keep in mind that the goal isn't to create perfect art. It's the focus on finding a healthy outlet for you. Does this all sound good so far? Yes, it does. Good, good, good. Good. I would like you to draw what you think a perfect day for you would look like. Does that make sense? That all sounds good to me. A flower field. I'll literally paint a flower field. Alright, discuss end discuss end goals of therapy. Discuss your long term involvement with Willow. Discuss Willow's feelings after emergency session. Relationship with Dr. Freeman. Um relationship with Tara. What music you're listening? What did the breakdown feel like? Uh let's start off with end goals of therapy and then switch over to like how she felt. Cause I want to start it slow, so I think we should reevaluate our expectations for what we can achieve through therapy. Reevaluate expectations? Do you think that my goal of living independently is no longer viable after what happened? Uh, uh I just want to check your, uh, <laughs> your priorities haven't changed. It may not be valid anymore. I absolutely think it's still achievable. I still think it's achievable. I want Willow to be able to live on their own. I absolutely think it's still achievable. It's just that the road we take to get there might just need to change. That's all. All right. What do you think we should change? We should focus more on interaction with Dr. Freeman. We should focus on how you deal with stress. We should focus on teaching your, your proper life skills. Uh, how you deal with stress. We should focus on how you handle stress. Knowing how to manage stress in a healthy way will keep you from feeling overloaded. Is that really the best use of my time? I think so. You can't control what's going to happen to you in life. But you can control how you react to it. Now that's such a good line. That's very true. <laughs> Believe me, I don't like the idea of having to deal with people that aggravate me. I get it, but they're always going to be around. So you might as well get used to the idea and start learning how to cope with it. Yeah, like you see a hate comment on your like Instagram feed or something? Just hit the block. Don't even bother replying to them. They took the effort to write that nasty comment, but you you just you know blocked it for a second. <laughs> took you a second to block the hatred away. Or like when someone's annoying you, IRL, uh, just walk away. <laughs> Don't even bother giving them the attention. Just you walking away would just frustrate them more. Uh, compared to you, like, giving out your anger to them. Just you know, usually just walk away. Don't see it. Pretend you're not there, I guess. I'll give it a try. But that might also be bad advice, so don't take my advice, alright? This is just how I cope. <laughs> uh emergency session. How 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 you felt? I'd like to discuss how you're feeling about our therapy sessions. I would say I feel very frustrated. I should have been able to handle what happened during our last session. And I'm not sure what to blame for it. Uh, why did you have trouble handling the breakdown? Why do you think you had trouble handling the breakdown? I felt that people were holding information back from me. It's frustrating never getting the full truth from anyone. I shouldn't have gotten so paranoid, but can you at least understand why I reacted so harshly? Tara was the closest thing I had to a friend, and she's gone. I trust you to a point, but we both know I need more than a therapist for company. No offense. No offense taken. None taken. What should I do? Are my expectations for people too high? <laughs> I think that's a, that's a hard yes from anybody's perspective. Like, sometimes you expect too much out of people, but, you know, just don't put any expectations on people. So that way you won't be hurt as much. Not all people can live up to your expectations. Everyone has different types of boundaries. Sometimes they're for comfort, other times they're for protection. I can understand wanting everyone to be open with you, but not everyone can give you that type of openness. Very true. So you're saying I shouldn't expect people to be honest? Yes. Some people just lie their asses out, right? This goes beyond that. Complete openness goes beyond simple honesty. It's a trait not many people have. When people aren't open with you, it might not be out of a desire to hurt you. They might be trying to protect themselves. I hadn't considered that aspect. 
I'll try to be more aware of that in the future. All right, all right, all right. Um, what did the breakdown feel like? What exactly did the breakdown feel like? Can you describe the sensation for me? Is it important for you to know? Only if you're comfortable talking about it. Only if you're comfortable talking about it. I'd never ask you to discuss something you didn't want to. All right. I'll try and tell you what I can. The best way to describe the sensation was a sort of itchiness. What do you mean by that? When you need to do something, your brain tells you that you have to do it, and then you do it. If you hear a knock on the door, you know someone's there, so you go and answer. No, I don't. Well, that's how it normally works, anyway. <laughs> normally, I, I don't answer the door. <laughs> the breakdown felt like I was constantly hearing someone at the door, and I knew I had to answer, but I also knew no one was actually there. It was this urgent sensation of having to do something important, but not being sure what it was. So the urgency kept building. The more it built up, the more stressed I became. And all these thoughts started whirling around in my head like a carousel. What kind of thoughts? Thoughts like, what's going on? Why can't I figure this out? I must have something wrong with me. All of them just cycling around faster and faster. Does that sound like a typical breakdown to you? Yeah. It's normal to feel stressed. Breakdowns like this aren't normal. It all depends on what you want to deal with. What the fuck? It's normal to feel stressed. Stress is a normal part of life. It's your ability to cope with it that's the real concern here. I usually cry or I usually try to keep myself busy <laughs> to not think about it. Or, you know, I just go sleep. Think of stress like dirt. It accumulates over time and can be handled easily if you clean it routinely. If you don't clean it regularly, it not only builds up, but becomes harder to remove. Your breakdown was most likely caused by letting too much stress build up. We'll focus on stress relief in the upcoming sessions. That sounds helpful. I'm open to that. Alright, nice. One choice left. Um... Uh... Let's not make her angry with these two. What music are you listening to? What song is this? It's Mare by Kai Angle. I like it, but I don't know if I should. Uh, why do you think you shouldn't like the song? Why do you think you shouldn't like this song? Well, there's reasons why I like this song that you won't want to hear. Uh, it's okay not to tell me if you don't want to. You don't have to tell me if you are uncomfortable. I appreciate hearing that. I just don't want to disappoint you. No, you won't disappoint me. I'm here to help you, Willow. Nothing you say will make me upset at you. I gotta keep it professional. <laughs> Alright. If you say so. For months now, I've felt like I've been trying to reach something. Like a swimmer trapped underwater. My instincts told me to just go up. I tried so hard to reach the surface. I really did. But after what happened, I just feel tired to keep swimming. When I listen to this song, I think to myself, maybe drifting off into the dark would be better than this. Maybe giving up won't be so bad. All I ever wanted was for the pain to stop. Now it seems like dying will be the only way that happens. It's not the only way. Death isn't the only way to make things better. It never is. I promise you that. I hope that I'll be able to believe you someday. Right now, it just seems impossible. I'll work with you until we get there. I promise. Uh, what do you like about this song? What do you like about this song? I've never gone swimming, and I don't think I ever will. But this gives me a good idea of what it feels like to be deep underwater at night. I hate water, so I do not enjoy this uh, imaginary imagery. <laughs> I get the sensation of just floating in a pool of endless black, stretching off into the vertigo-inducing horizon, with no light but the rays of the moon shining down. As the song goes on, I feel like I'm slowly drifting away, but there's no sense of urgency about it. I like that. I like the idea of just 
drifting off into the dark. It's a little scary, I wouldn't. There's something else I've been wondering about. And we're not going to find out until the next episode. I'm sorry to leave you guys off on a cliffhanger. But it's very interesting to uh, hear Willow's feelings about her wanting to just end it all. It's just it's a very touchy subject that I don't personally like to talk about. Because, you know, everyone... I feel like everyone goes through with these thoughts at least once in their life or often. And I always want to tell you that you know obviously do not do it there's people that love you even though you don't think anyone loves you someone out there will be affected if you were to be gone in this world so if you ever have those dark thoughts and you feel like no one like is there for you or no one cares about you just just remember there is at least somebody it's not a human it's your pet it's something all right so I'm not gonna <laughs> go into too deep of this conversation just because it's a very touchy subject uh, that I don't want to delve into because again it's something I feel all of us have gone through whether it's you personally or someone you know personally. But anyway thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one.